So Chris, what inspired you to start speaking at school? You know, eight years ago, I walked into a classroom and I looked into a bunch of teenagers' eyes and I decided to share my story and I, I listened to their feedback and I knew that it resonated to a certain extent. Um, and from that point, I never really wanted to stop. I wanted to continue. I wanted to get this message out there. And somewhere in there led you to starting Project Purple, right? So I'm a, no, that was a different school. Um, but yeah, along the way, Project Purple started because of a young girl who was wearing a purple shirt, said she was sober. Uh, I was so inspired by it that a teenage girl in high school could raise her hand and announce sobriety. Um, disappointed that kids laughed at it. So I walked out of that auditorium thinking I had to do more around this. I had to, you know, this sobriety is not something to laugh at. You know, recovery, abstinence is not a joke. Um, so, you know, that little girl inspired me and has led to 500,000 kids all across the country being part of this. And when you visit these towns and everyone's dressed in purple and the towns are purple, the lights are purple, mm. what's it mean to you when you see that? You know, it's, I have to pinch myself. You know, I had no idea. But again, it's, this is a message that I believe has to resonate with the students. I think it has to be student driven. They can't be forced into it. Um, you know, so when I walk into schools and I see kids really embracing this, uh, you know, I know that it has a chance and it has some longevity. Did you take a communications class in college? No. No. <laughs> you're a great speaker. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> What's the biggest difference between speaking with the kids and the adults? For you as the speaker. Oh, I take kids all day. Yeah. I love them. I love being in front of kids. I believe that's my greatest um, space and opportunity for impact. Uh, you know, community events are difficult because it's a wide range. You have children, young. Um, you have parents who are looking for that parental message. But you have people who are struggling with addiction. And then you have the recovery community. So you really have to touch on four or five different areas. When you're finished, and it's been an hour and a half, two hours, how do you feel? Exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and you do questions at the end. I do. What's something that you wish someone would ask you? You know, I'm hoping that the community will get behind, you know, what can we do to support this? You know, what can we do in our community to help get out in front of this or catch up to it? How about that? And what's the answer? Education, prevention. I mean, there's so many answers. I mean, we are a forgotten group. You know, people in recovery, you know, it's, it's, it's not looked at as a crisis, an illness. Um, and we don't do enough around it. You know, I say it often, when it comes to addiction and it comes to our children, we focus on the, f on the worst day and we forget the first day. It's safe to show our kids pictures of drug addicts and say, look at this poor guy. It's hard to look them in the eye at 16 and say, just tell me why you're beginning this. The scariest thing about addiction is nobody knows who has it. Nobody signs up for it. And yet we do so little around that. There's not a parent I've met who will raise their hand and guarantee to me that their kid will never struggle. So why in the world do you let them start drinking at 15 years old?